Let us begin with those text messages from the leaders of former President Trump's Homeland Security Department from around the time of the Capitol attack that have been deleted. According to the Washington Post, the lost messages are from both acting Homeland Security Secretary Chad Wolf and acting Deputy Secretary Ken Cuccinelli. The Post reporting this, quote, the Department of Homeland Security notified the agency's inspector general in late February that Wolf's and Cuccinelli's texts were lost in a reset of their government phones when they left their jobs in January of 2021. The Office of Inspector General Joseph Kafari did not press the department leadership at that time to explain why they did not preserve these records, nor seek ways to recover the lost data. That's according to the four people briefed on the watchdog's actions. The IG also failed to alert Congress to the potential destruction of government records. This comes, of course, after we learned the Secret Service deleted texts from the day before and the day of the insurrection. So, Jonathan Lemire, the more we hear, the worse this gets. It's not just the Secret Service. It's not just a few guys at Homeland Security. It's the leadership of Homeland Security who conveniently, much like the Secret Service, went through some kind of a upgrade that apparently deleted the text that may be now lost to time. Nothing suspicious about this at all, Willie. Uh, no, it is. It just adds to the growing belief that there is a cover-up in government, whether it's the Secret Service, Homeland Security, uh, about what happened around January 6th. These text messages, of course, would provide useful, really useful information to investigators, not just the January 6th committee, but of course the Department of Justice as they piece together exactly what happened that day, exactly what the former president's response was that day. Was there coordination to try to get any sort of law enforcement or military presence there? We heard from the then defense secretary in testimony released just this week that Trump, of course, despite his lies, did not send the National Guard there. In fact, it was the vice president having to do so. Uh, and it just, it just looks bad for this government to seemingly trying to cover its tracks for what happened that day. Richard Haas, you worked in the government. You're supposed to preserve records, <clears throat> even on normal days, even on boring days, <laughs> even on January 4th. And you're certainly supposed to on January 6th. Obviously. Uh, yeah, government is nothing if not, what's the word, protective. Of, of its communications. Uh, when you work at the White House, so you have any interaction with the president in particular, uh, you know, when you, I remember when, I, when you leave government, everything you have you know, gets filed, sent. One, you owe it to history. Short of lawyer, and most people in government, by the way, are not involved in legal investigations. Right. Uh, but this is, this is the historical record, and you owe it the, to history, you owe it to your successors. But this is obviously different. People were all put on notice. They knew that something shall we, this was not an ordinary January 6th. So the idea that things were casually lost by recess is preposterous. It simply doesn't pass the you know, credulity test. You know, Willie, it's also kind of a metaphor for the entire administration uh, that is out of office now, the Trump administration, in the terms of the destruction of elements of government that they cared not a whit for. Uh, so all the text messages are gone. They've been destroyed. Homeland Security, the, direct, the head of Homeland Security, his assistant, their text messages are gone. But Richard used to work in the State Department, and the State Department was gutted substantially during the four years. Other departments were gutted. Uh, the functions of government were, were destroyed. So it, it's, a, it's an apt metaphor and a disturbing metaphor for what happened during the course of four years, but especially the week of January 6th. It is an interesting to note that Chad Wolf actually left. He resigned about five days after the attack on the Capitol, the acting head of, the, of DHS, and was critical of Donald Trump uh, around that time in January, right when Donald Trump was leaving office, leaving Washington. So it would be interesting to know what was going on on his phone in those days around January 6th. We're going to talk to Carol Lenig of The Washington Post, who broke this story, uh, coming up in just a little bit here on Morning Joe.